Yeah. Oh, a little bit. So, 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 so I. The, 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 I think he needs a car. Oh, that's the way to the whole thing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. did you know that? Were you ready to not? Okay, but I'm not sure why they come to the But yes. I remember just a mess of that. So I thought it would be great. Our proposals were composing music. It might be an evening. Exactly. It was all emotional. That's not how it was. Some people are like, oh, it's not. It was. He just comes from the emotional. Oh, wait. 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 I yeah, we well, know there's a problem. Yeah. Kind of yeah. 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 Just wanted to let you know. Hey, it'll be a screen. Yeah. Oh, 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 is it the one that has uh, the big I mean, square on it? It's the it's like if it's yeah, that one's over. <laughs> Yeah, you can do it. Okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Just call the same thing that you did here. What do you want? Next year. What? What? You sit down and you write here. Yeah. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. That's possible. I mean, I think that's all friendly. This is the answer. You can technically start doing whatever you want. You can, if you want to. Once we've heard enough, you can move because it is going out to the public cloud. Just the same. Just the same. Put everything up. You can feel that.
Hello everyone, my name is Sonny Lee. I'm, I'm from New Orleans. I graduated from the University of New Orleans in 2006. I am the founder executive director of Son of a Saint, which was founded in 2011. Um, and we support boys who are growing up without their fathers. Uh, we have about 200 boys. Uh, and our first activity was here at the University of New Orleans Athletic Department. <coughs> Hi y'all, my name is Bailey Lewis. I'm two-time student body president at Northwestern State University, and I just got appointed as a student representing the Community System. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe Leatherman. I am a member of the ULS board. This is my second year of service. I'm a registered nurse by trade and a veterinarian. Good morning, everyone. Al Perkins, uh, University of Louisiana System board uh, supervisor. Uh, unfortunately, lawyer by trade. <laughs> Good morning again, everybody. Liz Pierre, you all sister board member. I'm currently serving as chairman of the board of supervisors and also an attorney, but not unfortunately. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Clark. I uh, serve and function as a uh, public policy uh, consultant in higher education around the country. I uh, live in Lafayette, Louisiana. I have a daughter who is a graduate from UNO. She received her MPA here a while back and is a resident here in New Orleans. So I have personal connection affiliation. Looking forward to the process. I'm Brad Stevens. I live in Hammond. I also am a lawyer. Um, save your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Parliamentarian, third year on the board of supervisors. I'm happy to be here today. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Romero. You are very native. I've been on the UL system board for 11 years now. Happy to serve and looking forward to working with you all as you select your next presidents. Good morning, uh, Stanley Peterson. I live here in New Orleans. I'm a member of the UL System Board of Supervisors and I run a local nonprofit organization that is an uh, education advocacy uh, organization here in the city. Uh, glad to be here this morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Virgil Robinson. I'm New Orleanian. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, UL of the Board of Supervisors. Um, I have um, been on the board now for 12 years, and uh, I'm excited about this opportunity to participate in selecting the next uh, president uh, for you. Hello, everybody. My name is Susan Hess. Uh, I am thrilled to be part of this process. I have known the last five chancellors slash presidents because I graduated from UNO in 1967, and uh, I'm sorry, dating myself, but I also went back uh, to the business school for an MBA in the 90s, and I was on the uh, UNO Foundation board for 35 years until I retired last year. So looking forward to this. Hope we do a good job. I am Chris Broders. I am a faculty member here at the University of New Orleans. Good morning, all. Ricky Burke. Uh, I'm a New Orleans native, UNO graduate from 1973. This got me peace by a little bit. I'm happy to serve, and I represent the UNO Alumni Association, and I currently serve as that organization's president. Thank you, committee members. This work is very important, and I certainly appreciate your commitment to finding the best person possible to serve as UNO's president. At this time, I would like to turn the meeting over to our committee chair, Dr. Jim Henderson. Dr. Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to all members of the search committee for uh, committing your time, not only to this meeting today, but for the next several months as we go through this process. Uh, for those in the audience, uh, Julie Stokes is a member of our board. Uh, she still wanted to be here today. She has a board retreat for Elevate Louisiana, and as their CEO, she thought it was important she'd be at her retreat uh, for organization. Uh, same with Bobby Savoy and, and, and Gary Solomon, both uh, are, are excited to be part of this committee and will be working with us going forward. And you know, when you put together this type of meeting in a short time frame, you're going to run into some scheduling conflicts. We thought this scheduling conflict for, for these three was more tolerable than a scheduling conflict that would be having this meeting after you all go home for the summer and your students go over the summer. So uh, please bear with us on that. We look forward to working with you through this. I would want to acknowledge that any time you go through a leadership change, it's a season of angst for an institution, certainly internal for faculty and staff. Because anytime you have change and new leadership, it, it is a, uh, 
uh, it can be a difficult situation. It's also a season of hope for the institution and for the community because you know, the most important work of the U.S. System Board is choosing presidents. And this institution has been through some of the most challenging times of any institution in the country going back since its beginning, but certainly in this, this century with Katrina and multiple name storms with a pandemic, with changes in mission, with changes in, in throughout higher education in Louisiana, with, with demographic shifts. Uh, but yet, you're the University of New Orleans, and you sit on the banks of Lake Pontchartrain in an iconic city. And so I think that this opportunity is going to be very, very attractive, and the opportunity for this institution to realize its mission at a higher level than ever before is before you. So today is our first meeting, official meeting of this committee. It's the first time we'll really lay out the framework for presidential search. We'll approve a charge of the committee, a tentative timeline, and a draft advertisement for recruitment purposes. Now, for the committee members and in your binders, there are materials that will be that are important to this meeting's discussion, but also be important going forward. So please bring these with you to subsequent meetings. The first order of business is to review the charge of the committee, and if you open your binders to tab two, that's the outline of the charge of the committee. This charge is rooted in our bylaws and rules, which are found in tab three. You don't have to review those completely right now, but you can see the charge. <laughs> Included in that charge is that this committee recommend at least two names to the full board of supervisors for the University of Louisiana system, consistent with our past practice. It could be more than two names, uh, but the board will ultimately select the next president. Um, the board, is, this committee is charged with defining a procedure and a timeline. That timeline is evolving, and we'll discuss it shortly. The timeline is malleable. The outcome is that we choose the right president for the University of New Orleans. And so when we try to put a timeline together that will result in us being able to do that successfully, that part is negotiable. Finding the right president is not. So if we need to, to adjust the timeline, we'll be able to do that. Uh, we have to visit the campus to obtain input. This is the first time we do this, and this is an open meeting where we'll have lots of feedback. There'll be ample time for folks to provide feedback uh, through multiple sources, and we look forward to that as we go forward. Later today, we'll listen to some faculty, uh, hopefully some students, some staff, alumni, and community members. Uh, in particular, we're interested to learn what qualifications that uh, you believe are essential to the next president, if he or she is to succeed in this role. We we'll hope to hear some perspectives on top priorities for the new president to address. Uh, we'll screen applicants and check references as a committee. We'll interview qualified candidates. We'll bring semifinalists here to the campus of UNO. <coughs> we've participated in several meetings with faculty, with staff, with community members, with students. And we'll receive feedback from all of those constituent groups. The search committee itself will conduct open session interviews and then we'll go into executive session and dig deeper into the backgrounds of the candidates. Are there any questions about the charge to the committee? If not, then we'll need a motion in a second to accept the charge uh, for the email search committee. So we'll move by Mr. Robinson. Second. Second. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Peterson. Second by Dr. Clark. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Is there any opposed? Thank you. So we have our charge. Now I'll refer to your binders again to tab four. And this is uh, uh, the potential timeline for us. Now, it's certain in, our, in our timeline, you, you see that the first thing is to search, select the search committee. Well, we've done that. You're here. Uh, the next thing is to listen feedback from campus communities, and today is the first opportunity to do that. This will help us broaden our understanding of issues that are of import and characteristics that have been a successful president. Uh, next charge is, is to part of the timeline is to develop an ad, and we'll discuss that shortly. Publishing that ad in various media, screening and selecting applicants to interview, interviewing applicants on campus, and recommending at least two names to the board. The process is pretty straightforward, of course, and we're going to be transparent throughout. Are there any questions and concerns regarding the process? Okay, and tab five is where that timeline is. Um, and the next phase, of course, is to wait on applicants during the advertising promotional phase. It's also recruiting of applicants, and we will send out targeted emails to a variety of, of, of sources uh, to ensure that we get a quality pool of candidates. We'll meet afterwards to select candidates to interview, and then we'll return to campus to interview semifinalists in late August after people return from the summer break. 
The current timeline shows our board making the selection at a special board meeting on September 14th in Baton Rouge. Now remember, this timeline is tentative. The search will take its own life as they all do, and it may need to be altered. The timeline will be revisited as needed throughout. At this time, I need a motion and a second to approve the timeline, the process and timeline for the selection. Move approval. Move by Mr. Robinson. Second. Second by Mark Romero. Uh, is, is, uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? We have a timeline. <coughs> Now, the next is a, item is a short discussion about the advertisement that will appear in Inside Higher Ed, Diverse Issues in Higher Ed, Women in Higher Ed, the Journal of Blacks in Higher Education, and the Chronicle of Higher Education. The draft ad is included in your binders under tab 6. You'll notice we've developed the first draft with an ad specifically for this search that provides information about the job, the university, and the community. It indicates how one can apply, which will be directly to the chair of the board, Ms. Pierre. We'll begin publishing the ad as early as tomorrow. The preferred date to receive completed applications for review and to select candidates for interview is Friday, August 4th. So that gives us a good amount of time for people to consider and make uh, thoughtful applications. Are there any questions or comments about the advertisement? Do I have a motion to, and a second to approve the advertisement? Second. Moved by Ms. Leatherman. Second. It's got to be one of the voting members of South Second by Mr. Peterson. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now, in order to fulfill our search responsibilities, it is important that we have a good sense and understanding of this university and its constituents. In the left-hand pocket of your binders is an overview of the University of Orleans. And also at this time, we're going to watch a short video which we hope captures the essence of you and others. University of New Orleans is the only public research university in greater New Orleans. It was founded more than 60 years ago on the twin pillars of... I'm sorry, we had a question? Yes. Yes, sir. There's a question regarding the, ad, the, ad, the advertisement. Yes, sir. Uh, when that's developed, will that be circulated through this, uh, this division? It will be, yes. Okay. Absolutely. It's, it's but this, this is the University of New Orleans is the only public research university in greater New Orleans. Founded more than 60 years ago on the twin pillars of educational access and excellence, the institution remains one of the city's most important public assets. Offering bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees, it blends rigorous academic preparation with a supportive, student-focused environment. Some of its most well-known programs guarantee an only New Orleans education in areas such as hotel, restaurant, and tourism administration, naval architecture and marine engineering, planning and urban studies, environmental sciences, and the arts. UNO has the only civil, electrical, and mechanical engineering programs in the city. It has produced more educational personnel in the metro area than any other institution, and it offers the state's only doctoral program in justice. The university has educated students from all 64 Louisiana parishes, all 50 states, and more than 140 countries. It is the most ethnically diverse university in the state of Louisiana. It ranks among the national universities whose students graduate with the least average debt, and it's one of the best in the nation in upward social mobility, both according to U.S. News and World Report. UNO students are engaged both on campus and in their city with internships, student organizations, clubs and affinity groups, and through concerts, lectures, exhibits, and sporting events including cheering on the privateers who participate in NCAA Division I athletics. The University of New Orleans drives major economic momentum in the region. The university and the beach at UNO, the adjacent research and technology park, combine to generate nearly $1 billion in annual economic activity. A key component of that activity is the number and influence of alumni. There are more than 47,000 in Metro New Orleans alone. As a community asset, UNO forges partnerships with business and industry. The $15 million new energy center of the U.S. is coming to the beach at UNO. Known as Nexus, it will serve as a hub for a range of clean energy initiatives that will put the university at the forefront of the global energy transition. The University of New Orleans, where next is now.
Very good. So, great video. Now we're going to move to the public forum part of our meeting. Now, board rules require that we hold a public forum, forum as part of the research process. So part of the meeting will allow for public input. I want to stress to those in the audience, it, it, it's great to see such a good turnout. Uh, you represent a voice at this institution. This is one forum for that voice to be presented. There will be multiple opportunities for you to weigh in as we go forward. So I want to make sure that you understand that this is not it. You don't get to speak in this next 30 minutes or however long we're here. Uh, but this is just the first step in this process, and so we appreciate you being here. Uh, your input is absolutely vital as we go through this process and, and select the next best president for the University of New Orleans. We're particularly interested in learning what you think are the essential qualifications and traits essential for the next president to be successful in this role. We're also excited to hear your perspectives on what are the top issues of concern or even the top opportunities facing this institution. It's not intended to be a dialogue with the committee or is it intended to be a session to promote a particular individual for this position, though inevitably that occurs. We're here to listen and to learn. Our purpose is to learn about the qualifications, the characteristics, the issues, priorities, and challenges for the next president. Your comments will be helpful throughout the search and especially as we interview candidates later in this process. Your comments will be recorded and posted to YouTube and linked to our website where applicants, nominees, and other interested parties will accept, they can access the comments and assess their interest. We also encourage you to visit the University of Louisiana System website for information and latest updates on the search. For those of you who would like to submit a written comment to the search committee, you'll find an e email link at that website to do so. Uh, all of those emails will be served with, uh, shared with the search committee for review. Uh, I will tell you that it is not unusual at all uh, for those emails to contain conspiracy theories, <laughs> to contain very, very candid expressions of angst, and all of those are welcome. I want you to know that. I prefer those that provide an opportunity to respond. But if you're not comfortable doing so, that's okay too. We want to know everything that you're concerned with, everything that you're interested in, and everything that you want to see happen. That's the only way that we can guarantee the success of this process. And so I'm very, very, very genuine when I tell you that. I sincerely appreciate all of that input. At this point, uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Calais to facilitate the portion of the meeting associated with public comment. Dr. Calais? Yes, thank you, Dr. Henderson. We would like interested individuals to stand and call upon to share their thoughts with the search committee about the important qualifications and qualifications for the next session. We have a very simple process that we will use to engage this morning's audience. The purpose is to learn more about your thoughts concerning important qualifications and for priorities for the next president. Individuals who wish to address the committee should complete a public comment card and hand it to those who are helping today. So we have some up here, and we do have some outside on this table. Staff will collect cards throughout the session and bring these to me. One at a time, I will call upon interested speakers to come forward. Speakers will have two minutes to express their views with 30 seconds remaining. I will hold up a yellow card signifying that your time is drawing to a close. When I hold up this, this red card, <laughs> your time has come to a close. <laughs> Only those who have completed cards will be asked to come forward. Thank you. We'll start with Brett Bonatero. He is a student here at the University of New Orleans, followed by Rebecca Conwell. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. For my first 15 months living in Louisiana, I was living with my grandmother after having moved away from Los Angeles. New Orleans was a city my mom would always take us to growing up, mainly to see family. So after my first time in New Orleans, I knew one day I would live here. New Orleans is a city worth falling in love with, and I did just that. It was love at first sight. Shortly after moving here, I began work in a restaurant while still enrolled on, in online courses at the community college I attended in California. Not before long, I realized that I wanted to continue pursuing education full-time and apply to the University of New Orleans. As a student of political science, I was attracted to the strong liberal arts department at UNF. However, before applying here, I didn't even know the school existed. 
or on earth is Jim Tilly? <laughs> in my limited travels in the world, I heard Tulane, Loyola, Delgado, Xavier, and Dillard. Never anything about U and My time at U and began as a commuter student, driving back and forth from Kenner to campus. In my first semester, I had a difficult time making friends. The only people I had any interaction with were other students in class. This got me looking around for student organizations to join, and ultimately I decided upon joining the Student Government Center. I've always had a passion for the representation of others and wanted to put the skills I had been developing as a political science student to work. SGA made perfect sense for me, and ended up being exactly what I was looking for. By my second semester, I was fully consumed with all things UNF. I passed three bills in my first full semester in the Senate. A student referendum to bring UNO a football team was the first piece of legislation I had ever presented to a legislative body. It passed the Senate vote but failed the student. While having worked on this project, I was unaware of the privateers hold Division I status. The need for football was just that obvious to me, regardless of the size of the university. Nonetheless, through my efforts, I was able to create a relationship with the athletics department and sell myself a job. When the summer rolled around, my first responsibility with the department was to sell concessions at the baseball complex. I was quickly able to demonstrate my job experience by upselling snacks, maintaining a tight workspace, and being adaptable when needed to help elsewhere. They kept me around for the fall, and I got the chance to work volleyball games. I had never fully acquainted myself with the sport of volleyball, but I quickly realized what I was missing out on. Things moved at a fast pace with the balance of defense and offense, power and precision. It's mesmerizing. Like the city, sports too are worth falling in love with. And go figure, New Orleans love their teams. <laughs> ever, since I, ever since, I have been able to work in men's and women's basketball games and baseball games. Growing up, I always played baseball, from t-ball to varsity in high school. It is a year-round sport and would always keep me active and my mind busy. Simply having played when I was younger turned me into a lifelong fan of the sport and an athlete at heart. Certainly I am not unique in their passion for sports, nor do I feel unique in having a passion for the city. However, as a student, I do feel unique in having a passion for you now. General student sentiment is lower than I have ever seen at, a, at any school I have previously attended. This hasn't been my experience, but it's the experience of those around me. UNL has given me the opportunity to be the person I want to be, and I'm thankful to be here. The next president of UNO needs to be energetic and passionate for the student experience. President Niklo kept UNO healthy through the pandemic, but now we need to, someone to give UNO a fresh breath of air. I believe the perfect candidate for this position is someone who understands the city of New Orleans and can care for neighborhood scholars. Someone who can recognize the strengths and weaknesses of our university without bias. We need a president who can speak for students and protect the interests of those who earn a degree here. A person with an interest in advancing the university's longevity. In football, a quarterback can be viewed in a handful of ways. A system quarterback is just there to move the ball from one player to another. If you follow the plan you are given, the blame can never be placed on you. But a playmaking quarterback is someone who takes the game into their own hands. A player who can throw the game from the side and think on their feet. This is what it means to have talent. When the plan is failing, being, being able to change course and the heat of battle to pursue victory. Above all, at UNO, we need a playmaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If I could offer something slightly more concrete, we need someone with a demonstrated record in growing enrollment in higher education. Thank you. Excellent. If you would, if you would you. mind providing those written comments to the search mini box, I'd appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Next, we will hear from Rebecca Conwell, UFO RT Foundation, followed by Dennis Mississippi. And just a reminder, um, we'll limit our comments to two minutes, but of course, with the students, we're a little more to yes. <laughs> I know. I got the message. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Henderson, the search committee. I am here very enthusiastically in support of this process. Um, as she said, I'm Rebecca Conwell. I'm the president and CEO of the UNO Research and Technology Foundation and uh, the Research Park, which has recently been rebranded the beach at UNO. Uh, the amount of momentum that we have been able to achieve over the last three years has been extraordinary. Uh, every decision that we make is for the benefit of the university. Uh, and is our priority when we arrive at work. We've outsourced uh, to experts to, to manage our real estate. 
who created an innovation division whose sole purpose is to connect. Um, I think we're at 36 to 38 tenants um, at the beach with the resources and assets of the university. What's important about the attributes of the new president, um, of course, has to be leadership, and everyone that you interview will have those skills. But not everyone is an actual collaborator. Not everyone sees the value of partnerships and resources and their role in the New Orleans community. Um, we are an anchor institution, and I think that the city has seen us and our attributes uh, in our community as such, uh, especially over the last uh, you know, five years or so. Um, the face of the president has been very prominent uh, in big decisions that have been made in, in the university, uh, but, but also in the city. <clears throat> One of the most common comments has been that President Niblo shows up. Um, he's in meetings, he's forward thinking, he's a visionary, and um, I'm excited about somebody who'll take what has already been achieved and maybe take it to the next level, understanding that uh, at this moment, there's never been more opportunities. Uh, I wanna wrap up and say, like you mentioned, the engineering department, the University of New Orleans right now has the opportunity to be the leader in the nation in offshore wind, workforce, education, uh, and uh, innovation. And I hope somebody will like allow us to partner and to be able to add some more juice to that uh, and to keep that going. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Dennis McSevney. I joined the LSU NO faculty on January 10th of 1972. I'm old. <laughs> I thought it was a temporary first job, but I really grew to love the university and the city and the state of Louisiana. In 2008, I retired as Professor Emeritus of Sociology, Dean Emeritus of the College of Arts and Associate Provost Emeritus. The LSU board did all that. Since then, I've served on and continue to serve on various local um, and international nonprofit organizations. I have the privilege of serving right now as the treasurer of Urban League of Louisiana, um, which is the, the, my the real passion. Judy and I work, work a lot together. I talk to her sometimes more than I talk to my wife. <laughs> I'm here today because I care about you and I care about its future and its importance in the future of New Orleans and the state of Louisiana. For UNO's next president, I'd like to see this body select someone who can continue the tradition of fostering economic inclusion. UNO has really done that from the beginning, fostering and creating the middle class for New Orleans and the New Orleans region. Maintaining our history of diversity, UNO opened as the first fully integrated public university in the South. I think that's an important part of our tradition and part of what kept me here. Um, in the 70s, I taught students who had actually come to UNO in 1958, African-American students who came here in 1958. And I said of one of them, who we'd stay after class at night for hours talking, that I was his professor, he was my teacher. Um, <clears throat> we, need, we need quality education, both the undergraduate and the graduate levels. And that requires recruiting and hiring and retaining excellent faculty. Shared governance, faculty involved in research, improving our community, and offering a broad range of activities for our students at the highest level, including intercollegiate athletics. And I see the red sign, so I'll skip page two. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Suma. I'm a faculty member in the computer science department here at UNO, and I've been here since August of 2007. Um, we're really excited about this process, and we thank you uh, up front about all the hard work that you guys are going to be doing no doubt, over the next several weeks to months. Um, as far as the next uh, president, we want to make sure, as, as faculty members in the uh, computer science department, that you guys pick somebody um, that really truly understands the challenges of an urban research university like the University of New Orleans. 
Uh, the students, faculty, and staff, I feel like, have <coughs> at UNL a very specific set of not only challenges, um, but strengths, and uh, that needs to be sort of something that you, you all consider in your, in your, in your process. Uh, the next faculty member, sorry, the next president should uh, show a commitment to research and ideally a commitment to UNL in particular. Um, finally, a willingness to engage with faculty because the faculty and the students really are the university here at UNL. Uh, we look forward and are very excited about all the sort of new things that any new president that you bring in uh, might want to uh, do, um, but we want to make sure that during his or her tenure that those, all those new, let's call them initiatives, don't allow the programs that currently exist and are strong and important not only to the university but to the community and the city at large, that they don't wither and die as a result of, you know, big new, new programs. So, so somebody that truly understands what's going on here and um, is committed to that. And I, that's, that's about it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you mind unpacking a little bit? Uh, you spoke earlier in your comments about the unique challenges of an urban institution, urban research institution. Well, not only the, the financial challenges of our students, um, but the fact that we are in a, a big city and, and we have a commitment to um, not only educating, but, but sort of being part of the economic engine of a large city. And that's going to differ significantly from, I don't know if you were to choose somebody that has a lot of experience sort of in rural Iowa in a college town, that doesn't necessarily transfer to what we're doing here at UNL. Did that? Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Next, we'll hear from Ava Farah, member of the community, followed by Robin Williams. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Ava Farah. I'm a nobody. I'm not an alumna of the University of New Orleans. I'm a, everybody. I'm a plus one. My husband is an alumnus. I'm a retired Air Force pilot, retired airline pilot. We moved back to New Orleans partly to reconnect with my husband's hometown, and mostly to reconnect with his friends that he had here at the University of New Orleans, whether through his fraternity or elsewhere. <laughs> I've let others speak to what we need academically and as far as business out outreach and business partnerships for the university. I know many of the deans now, lots of faculty members, they're way smarter than I am. I'm here to support what Dr. Nicolo had as one of his, I believe, top priorities, which was a robust, strong, and growing athletic department. The reason I'm involved with the University of New Orleans is because of the athletic department. We started coming to a couple of baseball games years ago. Now we're season ticket holders for baseball, basketball. We go to volleyball games. We're thrilled that we have the new beach volleyball courts on campus. And through my interaction with the athletic department staff, with the student athletes especially, we have grown to support more and more the Alumni Association, the um, UNO Foundation, Privateer Scholarship <coughs> Fund, and that has all drawn us in through athletics. The Homer Hit Lecture Series that we participate in, the uh, Jazz at the Sandbar musical programs on campus, all of this started by us coming into the athletics and participating there and growing our friendships and our involvement with the university in a broader scale. So not just academically, but I think we need a strong, athletically driven president, again, as we have in Dr. Nicola right now. Thank you very much. Williams, followed by Ben Samuel. Robin Williams is a faculty member in training. 
Hi, I'm Robin Williams, as she has said. I'm on a professor of music in the School of the Arts, which is housed in the College of Liberal Arts Education and Human Development, probably the longest name of the university. I, I have some collective comments from primarily members of the Liberal Arts College, and so I've been asked to share. At the top of the list, we need a president who listens to and collaborates with faculty. Decisions have been made that had faculty been seriously considered, some of these decisions might have found compromise, so much so that we would not be experiencing some of the difficulties we have today. Two specific areas. The drastic reduction in international education has now caused us to also lose enrollment in the international studies program. The second area, which I'm thinking many in this room are actually not aware of because this just happened about 10 days ago, is the $1.7 million judgment against UNO because an earlier president refused to listen to advice from the Faculty Senate and the Faculty Council when it came to removing two tenured geography professors. We cannot have a president who does not listen to faculty. We care about this institution, we love what we do, and when we give advice, it's really not for us, it's for the sake of the students here. And so we really want you to, to seriously understand that we need a collaborative president, someone who is willing to listen to us and take advice. Granted, administrations occasionally have to make decisions that don't make us happy. But what is important is that we are considered, that our, our opinions are, try, we try to actually bring those opinions to the forefront. And then we're also informed of why a decision has been made. So I, uh, and, I and one more final thing, uh, from the College of Liberal Arts, we generally uh, want a, a president committed to the liberal arts as a core model of higher education. A president that has a larger vision of education beyond narrow training for careers perspective. This, it's been, it's been mentioned here already a few times. UNO reaches across all areas, all areas economically. We need to be strong in liberal arts. All, we hear from business professionals sometimes, like some of the most creative thinkers that they've hired and the hardest workers we're actually liberal arts graduates. So we really, I understand the world is all about STEM these days, but liberal arts is an important aspect too. And so I, I would like a president to be aware of that and best <coughs> the, the practical needs of the community. Thank you. Thank you. For the committee members, uh, the UL system has, has launched several years ago a, uh, a core competencies uh, initiative, and it was actually led by Kim Martin Long, a member of the liberal arts faculty here at the University of New Orleans. And we're going to send that document out to all of you so you have a kind of a, a sense that, that I think is supported a lot by the comments we just heard. Certainly, it's, it's complementary of them, and how that, that broad liberal education is absolutely essential. I'm just for, to, producing competitive workers, but con contributing citizens, and how important it is going forward. We'll make sure that that gets to you, just for your edification. But thank you for those comments. Yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, committee, for having me. My name is Ben Samuel. I'm a professor in the computer science department. And like I think many of us in this room, when I first moved here from California about six years ago, it did not take long for the city of New Orleans and for UNO itself to worm its way into my heart, to fall deeply and madly in love with everything that the city has to offer. I believe that although any president that you would find would immediately find themselves in that same situation, that that is not the quality that we want in our next president. The quality that we want in our next president is someone who already has fallen in love with UNO. Someone who already is familiar with the city and all of its challenges and opportunities and all of the university's challenges and opportunities. If we, like this has come up earlier, but every city has its own unique difficulties. If we bring someone in 
who is bringing their own unique perspective. That's great and that's wonderful. And of course, new perspectives are, are lovely. But we are in a moment where we need, as has been said, playmakers. We need visionaries and we need strong leadership. And if we can hit the ground running with someone who is already familiar with all of the intricacies that we are facing, that is going to put us on the fast track to making UNO the institution that we all already know that it is and that it can be. We need someone who cares deeply about faculty and students, someone with a strong history of research, teaching, and administrative service, someone who is, as has been said by Robin, comfortable with collaborations, as was seen in the video, we have so many incredible programs across the sciences, across liberal arts, across tourism. We need someone who's willing to understand all of these different unique situations and find ways to bring our students and bring our faculty to collaborate together in all of these ways. We need someone who can interface with the city and the businesses and industries within it. Oh, that was fast. Uh, <laughs> and uh, someone who is a planner, someone who has a history of making master plans. And although you, of course, cannot put a price tag on the value and benefits that we bring our students into the city, you can put a price tag on keeping the lights on. <laughs> and we need someone with a proven track record of bringing in external funding to the university. And above all, we need someone who can do all of this with integrity. Thank you all so much. Good morning, uh, if it's the morning. And it's very, very, very nice to see all of you involved and so many unique perspectives <coughs> at, at um, tables in front of me. Um, my wife arrived at UNO one year after Susan graduated. I arrived two years after that. Uh, here is where we met, here is where we started our I got our degree, started our marriage, uh, found our church parish, uh, and to this day, my wife is working 50 years in her profession with the federal government. She's working now. And I'm 49 years with AT&T. And our passions go well beyond what we learn here as students. Our passions have grown to include everything that we have learned ever since we graduated, and we continue to learn. And, as has been said before, this university, in this city, in this region, has such an inclusive nature and opportunity and drive that the programs here are so critical to us as being not merely technically uh, able in a particular area, but also as being full, well-rounded humans who can serve as citizens and as leaders. And so that is my greatest concern, is that we do not, I mean, we are a whole university. We are not focused on a single thing, and that is a challenge because we want to be excellent in everything we do. And yet, we need to serve a much broader uh, view of humanity and subject matter. So. That is really concerning to me when I hear about faculty lines that have been open too long, ranging from fine arts to civil engineering. I'm talking about the breadth and depth of our university. And that's what concerns me about having a leader who can address this wholly as an entire body. Thank you. Thank you. He is a staff member here at UNO, followed by the last commenter, Elliot Beaton. I'm going to start using my time. Anthony Gregorio, <laughs> <laughs> University Advancement, and president of the University of New Orleans Foundation. If you like that uh, ad, please, it's, I think it's what? www.newandnew.gif. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So, Anthony, what are these, or where are you from originally? 
from Freeport, Louisiana. <laughs> We thought it was just there, so if I slip back into my accent, that's what happened. So what are the characteristics, traits, and skills that the committee should consider in their selection of the next president? As with the selection or hiring process, there are must-have or mandatory conditions and characteristics, and there are nice-to-have characteristics. I'd like to speak to the must-have characteristics, or should I say characteristics? It's singular. There's only one, and with the absence of this characteristic, all others are meaningless. The next president of the University of New Orleans will set the vision of their tenure. However, turning that vision into a reality will be impossible without the most critical element in leadership, integrity. Leaders with integrity are honest about their intentions, and gain the trust of their employees, peers, and supporters through their honest words and actions. They succeed because they have no hidden agenda or motives. Integrity is simply paramount in leadership. The former president, Supreme Allied Commander, Dwight D. Eisenhower, said of integrity, the supreme quality for leadership is unquestionably integrity. Without it, no real success is possible. At its core, integrity is the combination of both consistency in words and action, as well as the adherence to morality and one's values in these actions. Real integrity, said Oprah Winfrey, is doing the right thing knowing that nobody is going to know that you did the right thing. There is little doubt that different jobs require different and oftentimes unique skill sets. The uniqueness of the skill set required can never override the integrity linchpin. All one has to do is look at the hiring practices of one of the most successful business persons in history, Warren Buffett. He said, we look for three things when we hire people. We look for intelligence, we look for initiative or energy, and we look for integrity. And if they don't have the latter, the first two will kill you. What Buffett is saying essentially is that intelligence and initiative are important, but integrity is what matters most. Integrity embodies the most important qualities of leader. Honesty, strength of courage, strong character. Leaders who foster a culture of integrity earn a reputation for being honest and trustworthy <coughs> and that that trust within an organization that is crucial to everybody's productivity and achieving the long-term success of turning the leader's vision into reality. So, I as a committee goes through the process of building its rubric for the selection of the next president, I respectfully request you strongly consider the importance of selecting a leader of sound integrity. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ellie Beaton, and uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Psychology. And I want to thank you all for your service. I know there's a, a lot of work you're about to go on. I've been on the search committee myself, so appreciate your work. So the thing that I want to bring forward is uh, uh, research. I'm biased. I'm in the College of Science. My research has been funded by the NIH and the uh, National Science Foundation. Some of my students have been funded by the Board of Regents. Thank you, the Board of Regents. Anybody that's here from that. Uh, one thing that's really important in a next president is someone who's going to recognize the value of the graduate program and the research and mission. Because without the PhD students, without the doctoral students, we can't do the research that brings in the grants. And the reality is financially, we need to have other sources of revenue. Right? So when I came here from the NIH, I had this grant called the R00 grant. And I brought with me $750,000. And that got spent on students, on research equipment, on the local economy, because we were flying people in from families who say that the genetic disorder, where a third of their children get schizophrenia, trying to prevent that. 
my colleagues are working on cures, they're working on really important work. And when they bring in grant money, that grant money covers the research, the students, staffing, but also FNA. Right? So if you have an FNA rate of 46% and one of your faculty members brings in a million dollars, that million dollars is spent here, and 46% is another check that the NIH will write. Right? So you can see how these powerhouse universities, the university will have lots of research mission really protected. And some folks are bringing in two or three R01s. Each R01 is between 1.5 and 2.3 million dollars. We cannot do that with graduate students. We cannot do that with PhDs. My PhD students are going to places like University of Washington Department of Psychiatry. They're going to University of Arizona. They're going to my network. Our students are talented, smart. They're running against a headwind because they're unfunded and they're bringing in money. So the reality is we have to think about money. That's just the reality. And if you can bring in science dollars, it's going to bring just as much as any fourth world, if not more, if not more. And so we can do that if we protect our graduate programs. And I really, really need a president who's going to recognize that and also hopefully come from an environment where there are doctoral programs already. Because it's a big difference. Doctoral program and undergrad program, both critical to our mission, but they're very different, right? They're very, very different. Grad programs look like they cost money. Right, where undergrad programs bring in them. But really, ultimately, the graduate program, if you take care of it, will bring in way more money. And I'll leave it at that. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ellen Lee. I'm an alum, a former faculty member, a member of the foundation board on the staff. Uh, if you cut me here, I bleed silver and blue. And so I, I thank you all for, for being here and for this uh, important task in, ahead of you. Um, ditto to everything that everyone has said about the qualities that we want. So I won't repeat that. What I'll do say is that first of all, I'm so uh, delighted to see the diversity of this uh, committee. So across race and gender and ethnicity is a beautiful thing. I want to make sure and hope and keep on your minds that we are that intentional as we look for candidates um, to lead this university. In the over 60 years of this university's existence, we've not had a woman, girls, girls rule, um, <laughs> or a person of color who's led this university and rarely although it has happened, but rarely have we had people in higher uh, positions, higher in the administration, deans of colleges, etc. And so I implore you to be intentional as you search for candidates. We want the right candidate to lead this university, whatever their race, gender, creed, color. But I implore you to be intentional, and I heard some of the places where you're putting the, you know, you're going to advertise the position but to be intentional about finding a diverse pool of candidates um, because we know that when we have a diversity, uh, not just of demographic, but thought um, and experience, that that's when we find the best leaders for our, uh, our wonderful UN. Thank you so much. Found a better comment to go on. Thank you for those comments. I appreciate that. I don't think everyone attended today, but the, the community members, the alumni, the faculty, the staff, the students, your participation is welcome. Your passion is notable. And I think it goes well for the for the uh, furtherance of this process. In terms of business, is there any other business to come before the community? Two. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not sure. Business. <coughs> two, two comments. One, uh, you made the uh, suggestion that the written comments from the student were yes. put forward. I would say, to echo that, um, particularly interest, interested in hearing page two of uh, Dr. Dennis's uh, statements that he did not make. Uh, please, please, please submit those. And, and then, just from a personal standpoint, from having recently been on the, the search committee uh, for Southeastern, um, I cannot, you know, express enough one how much we appreciate the comments and the participation that we are hearing today from the public, but probably more so the, the expected and anticipated participation of the community members that have been appointed. 
Um, it's extraordinarily important to happen. I know when it's announced, you say voting members, non voting members, and so on. The reality is there's an equal treatment of thought and ideas, and, and it's expected. So uh, I'm looking forward to the participation. Great thoughts. Thank you for coming. Any other comments or points of business? Well, members, realize your time is valuable and you have many other activities that you could have been involved in this morning. Uh, and you chose to be here. We appreciate that. Uh, for those that are in participation, you, you chose to share your thoughts with this committee. It's deeply appreciated. The future of this institution is important, not just to New Orleans, and that's important in its own right. The two education in Louisiana is the Gulf South in the nation. This is a, um, a, a extraordinary, extraordinary institution whose best days are yet to come. As was the case with other presidential searches this board conducted, we gained some very valuable insights today, and it's just the beginning. This information and others that you provide and we, we uh, uh, solicit from, from many different groups will be helpful in shaping our discussions going forward. And all of this information will be shared with the candidates. Uh, the, they, the, the candidates who want to come and be part of here need to want to come to UNO, to the University of New Orleans. This information will help them decide to make that assessment and decide they want to be part of this campus and this vibrant community. We look forward to continuing our dialogue with you and selecting a great president for this great institution. At this time, we'll need a motion and a second to adjourn. Do we have a motion? So move, Stevens. Moved by Stevens, second by Ms. Leatherman. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Members of the board, we're going to uh, break for about 15 minutes, and then the executive committee will reconvene for uh, another 